Editing HDR images in Lightroom is incredibly simple and also the results are extremely realistic. Let's take a look at how it's done. Before we get started, my new book, The Digital Darkroom, The Definitive Guide to Photo Editing in Adobe Photoshop and Affinity Photo is now available. For more information about the book and to order your copy, follow the link in the video description. So the first thing you need to do is find your bracketed exposures in Lightroom. And here I've numbered mine one, two and three, just so I can see them really quickly and easily at a glance. Just click on that first image and then hold down the shift key and click on the third or the fifth depending on how many exposures you've taken and then just right click on any of those images and from that menu go up to photo merge and then HDR. After a few moments the image will render and we just need to make sure that auto align is checked because that's going to make sure that if there was any movement between those bracketed exposures that will be accounted for. Make sure that auto settings is unchecked because it just applies some really rubbish adjustments and I've always found that I change every single one of them so it's always best just to start with a fresh new image. And then at the bottom I've got create stack checked because it just brings those three exposures and the DNG that's created by Lightroom all together into a stack so it's just really nice and tidy in the Lightroom interface and the first thing I always do in this dialog here is I will set the deghost amount to high just to see if I need to have it set to that amount and then I will take it down each step if I can get away with it but you just have to wait and see what kind of movement there was in the scene as the preview is rendered. So with the deghost amount set to high, we haven't got the red mask over any parts of the image, so there wasn't any movement between each of the exposures. If there was a red patch somewhere, I would then try medium. If that same area was selected, I'd then go down to low. You just need to use the lowest deghost amount that you can get away with, but here, because there isn't any movement at all, I'm just gonna click on none, and then hit merge to merge those three exposures together and create that new DNG file. So here is our HDR image and I have the stack down here in the thumbnails at the bottom, but I'm just gonna minimize that just to give us a bit more space on the main screen. So the main controls for adjusting HDR images in Lightroom are the highlights, the shadows, the whites and the blacks, and also by using localized adjustments, so things like the graduated filter, the radial filter, the adjustment brush, that's where you can lighten and brighten different parts of the image, or indeed make them darker. So the first thing I'm gonna do now is just increase the white balance, so take the temperature over to the right, just to make the shot a lot warmer. So I'm gonna go for an amount of around nine, thousand and then I'm just going to bring that tint down so there we go we've got some of that natural sunlight hitting the water in the foreground that's all looking good next up I am just going to click on the point curve preset and choose medium contrast and then scroll back up to the main controls so just using the snow in this area as a guide the shot is generally looking a bit too dark so I'm just going to increase the overall brightness let's take that up to 45 so now the snow in the kind of mid ground is looking good but we've got a blown sky so we'll take a look at that in a moment next up let's take the highlights over to the left so as you're doing that to recover highlights you can hold down the Alt key and that shows you if you have any blown highlights, but we're just gonna take that down to 40. I don't wanna push it too far. So there we go, and let's just increase the shadows as well, just to lighten this area in the foreground and pull a bit more of that detail from the bottom of the river. 
So somewhere around 50 is looking good for this shot. And then let's take the whites over to the right. So I'm just holding down the Alt key and here you can see we're really blowing that area of the sky around there. So we will definitely need to recover that later on. And then let's just bring the blacks down to minus 12. We have some pure black here. So that's all looking good. So the great thing about the HDR DNG that Lightroom creates is that it contains all of the exposure data from those bracketed exposures. So we can really push and pull the exposure in different parts of the scene quite a long way to recover that detail. And if we're careful, we can keep things looking as natural as possible. So just with the basic controls here, I'm just going to take the texture up to plus 10 just to, well, plus 11, that should be fine, just to accentuate some of this texture and detail in the midground. And I'm just going to take the clarity, which is essentially mid-tone contrast, up to plus 16. So now that's the basic processing of the shot complete. Now we can start using localized adjustments to control the exposure of the sky. So for this one, I'm going to go for the radial filter and I am just going to hold the shift key just so that I pull it out in a perfect circle. It just constrains the proportions and let's pop that there in the middle, make it slightly larger. And then I'm going to hit O on the keyboard so that then shows the mask. So let's just bring that down a bit there, a bit further in there. And what I would like to do is target the mask to the brighter parts of the scene. So I'm going to go down to range mask within the controls here and click on luminance. And then I'm just going to drag that left hand slider over to the right. So when you drag the left hand slider right, that targets the brighter tones. And conversely, the slider on the right, you drag that left and it will target the dark tones. So let's just take the range over. Let's go for 75. And then I'm just going to take the smoothness up to 60 just to spread that out and soften the overall effect. So now we can see where that local adjustment is affecting the image. And as I was hoping, it's not hitting the mountain here. It's a really good mask. So that's that's a, a really good starting point. So now I'm just going to hit O to turn the mask off and then start working on recovering that detail. So first up, I'm going to bring the exposure over to the left to darken that area. So let's bring that down to about 1.24 and we can see some of that sky detail. We've got more cloud popping out. We've got a tiny bit of blue, so that's really good. I'm just gonna bring the highlights down as well. So let's just bring those down to, let's go for minus 55. Now, when you're working with the localized adjustments, working on a HDR image, you have to be really careful when adding any highlight or shadow recovery because that can make the result look really quite unnatural. Exposure is the most important slider, but there are times like here where highlights are going to really help with what we're trying to achieve. So it's one of those things that you, you kind of get an eye for when you need to use the shadows and the highlights with the localized adjustments. And then finally, let's just dull the white slightly. So we're bringing the white point down just in this area. So you'll see that we've just pulled through a bit more of the natural sky color by reducing that white point. And there we have our finished HDR image. So there is our start image. And there is our after image, which is looking really nice and natural. So that is how to edit your HDR images using Lightroom Classic. Mm -hmm.